Vital Kids. Welcome to Vital Kids Online. My name is Jamie and we are going to have a blast together today. But first, if you're not already, stand up on your feet and high five your neighbor. High five, high five. Okay, next I want you to belly bump somebody in the room. Are you ready? Belly bump, let's go. Woo! All right, guys, Whew. that was a little rough. Stand up to your feet if you fell down like me, and let's get ready to worship Jesus. Jesus, I got Jesus. 
Welcome back to our series. I know it sounds great. But it's true. Have you ever heard of someone who just talks about themselves all the time and just brags and they just think they're the best at everything? Well, it's kind of hard to listen to someone when they talk like that, right? Like, just full of pride is what we call it. Whew, I'm so out of breath. Well, when they talk about themselves all the time and they're full of pride, that can have some serious consequences. And today in our Bible story, we're gonna learn about a man who had something crazy happen to him because of pride. Check out this video so you can learn more about our story. Hello again, boys and girls. It is I, Josh, your guide through the weird, the wacky, the bizarre, the totally nuts stories of the Bible. And I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Now we've talked about some weird stuff in this series. You can say that again. We've talked about some weird stuff in this series. I didn't mean literally. We've talked about hairy disguises, fire coming out of rocks, money coming out of fish. But today, we're talking about a creature. Yes? A creature so horrifying I'm listening. So terrifying. <laughs> so bizarre. Spit it out, man. What is it? The dreaded <laughs> cow. Wait, what? We're talking about a king. I'm the fairest one of all. Who was turned into a cow. All hail King Bessie. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. In ancient times, there was an empire called Babylon. You might have heard about it in history class. Babylon was considered to be the center of the world. It was incredibly big and powerful, all thanks to a king named Nebuchadnezzar. Say what? Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. I know, it's kind of weird. No, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. Ding dong. Nebi jeebi. Are you guys even trying? Say it with me. Ne, ne, buh, buh, k. 
Cud. Cud. Nezer. Nezer. Now put them together. Nebuchadnezzar. Yep, that's it. No, it's not. King Nebuchadnezzar was in charge of the most powerful kingdom of the world, and he knew it. He thought he was bigger oh, yeah. and badder Take that. than everybody else. In fact, he thought he was more powerful than God. That's what you call a big no-no. You got that right. It also goes by another name. Nebuchadnezzar. Pride. Now there's good pride and bad pride. The good pride is when you feel pretty good about something that you did. But you just look at that. But bad pride is when you think you're better than everybody. <laughs> Even God, just like King Nebuchadnezzar. So God taught him a lesson and turned him into a cow. I guess you could say he became a Burger King. You scare me so much. The terrifying tale of the proud cow disease. Professor, hit that button. Oh, this will be good. Moo. You could have at least made him smell better. I have to catch my breath during that video. Wow, do you remember when I mentioned that there are consequences for pride? Well, King Ebuchadnezzar found that out the hard way. You see, when we're prideful, at some point there are consequences. And when we're faced with those consequences, we have to make a decision. Are we gonna keep being prideful and keep bragging about ourselves and keep taking all the credit? Or are we gonna be humble? And are we gonna turn to God? And are we gonna give Him the praise and Him the glory? Well, we'll find out more about what Nebuchadnezzar decided to do. But first, we're gonna check in with Disco Dave for, let me hear you say it. What you gotta know, what you gotta know, what you gotta know. What's happening, you crazy cats? It's me, Disco Dave, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're talking about the importance of staying humble. So today, every time somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them, I will choose to stay humble and say no to pride. As Christians, we can't be full of pride. I'm the most far out, groovy, most cooler rooney, funky fresh dude that has ever lived. That's not being humble. You can't go around bragging about yourself. You gotta be humble and lift God up instead. So today, every time somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them, I will choose to stay humble and say no to pride. That right there is what you gotta know. I'm Disco Dave saying, Dynamite! can beat me. I am unstoppable. Unstoppable. Furthermore, I am un... un well, you get the point, right, civilian? Ow! Uh, yeah, I guess you're a pretty good major. Good? No, civilian. I'm the best. Oh. Well, I'm going to take a second to call you out on this one because I feel like we have a friendship and friends help each other. You sound like you just drank a big gulp of prideful flavored Kool-Aid. Well, I have won the most awards. And I've won the what Rashambo tournament three years in a row, civilian. I'm not being prideful. I'm just stating the facts, friend. Well, I don't doubt that you've won all those awards and the Roe Shampoo Championship. But as we're learning today, we need to be humble. Why would I want to be humble, civilian? 
because, let me break it down for you, but you really should stay for our lesson to hear more. When we do something good, it's because of Jesus. So instead of bragging about ourselves, we should be bragging about him. Well, I doubt you're right about any of this, civilian. But I'm willing to stick around and hear what the Bible has to say about pride and being humble. That's a good choice, Major. Um, I have to ask, what is ro... ro... ro shampoo? Rochambeau. You know, rock, paper, scissors. Tell me you've played this game, civilian. Uh, yeah, rock, paper, scissors. I have played that. I've just never heard it called Roshimbo. Roshambo. Roshambo. Correct, Sabine. Well, since you're the reigning champ, you want to play against me? I certainly would. All right. All right. Rock, rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. Uh, what was that? Rain. Rain destroys paper, civilian. Champion remains. Well, I wasn't aware that there was a fourth option, but uh, good game. Good game? And I must be going. I need to rest and ice my hand for the big tournament tomorrow. But I am going to, before I leave, listen to your lesson. All right. Okay, bye, Major. I hope your championship remains. Of course, civilian. Bye. Good day. Hey kids, what time is it? It's time to play Cow, Chicken, Pig. The game where you can be a cow, a chicken, or a pig. So stand up and choose which animal you want to be. But choose carefully because if your animal is eliminated, then you are out. Today's Bible story is a really wild one from the book of Daniel, chapter 4. King Nebuchadnezzar, can you say that? King Nebuchadnezzar, 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 was the ruler of the entire country of Babylon. He was the most powerful man in the world at that time. The problem was that he believed he had done all of that on his own. He was a very prideful man. God gave him a dream one night, but the king couldn't understand it. It totally freaked him out. So he called Daniel to interpret the dream. Daniel was a man of God, and he told the king what the dream meant. He said that if Nebuchadnezzar didn't repent of his pride, 
God was going to drive him away into the wilderness where he would live with wild animals. The king didn't listen very well. A few months later, he walked out onto his porch and looked over the city of Babylon. He said to himself, Just look at this amazing city that I built with my own power, so all will know my splendor. Wow, that sounds pretty crazy, huh? The moment he started bragging on himself, God spoke from heaven, and he said, Nebuchadnezzar, I am making good on my promise. Your royal authority is now going to be stripped from you. You will be driven away from your people and you will eat grass with the cows. Eat grass with the cows? Whoa, talk about pride going before destruction. That's bad. The Bible says that King Nebuchadnezzar ate, slept, and lived with the cows for seven years. He ended up looking like an incredibly wild creature. Can you say moo? Well, seven years passed and the king continued living as a cow. One day, he suddenly came to his senses. He looked up from heaven and began to praise God. He honored God for all he had done for him. He admitted that God was the reason he had anything at all. He was finally letting go of his pride and giving God the honor and praise. At that moment, God restored his sanity and gave him back his life, his throne, and his kingdom. King Nebuchadnezzar continued to praise God and give him glory. And he told everyone that God was the reason for his great kingdom. In your lesson today, you're going to learn how to avoid proud cow disease. to cook tacos like soup. Oh, hey boys and girls, it's me, Terry, Terry Yonke. And I was just getting ready to cook up something tasty for my restaurant, Nice Rice. As you know, I'm kind of famous for getting things scrambled. Well, today's power verse is extra scrambled and I need your help. Let's take a look at it. Proverbs goes before destruction and haughtiness before a 1618. Pride fall. Um, yes, this is not right. Very, very wrong. Kind of reminds me of the time I made meatloaf with all liquids. Oh, that was disgusting. Okay, boys and girls, let's look at this together again. Hmm, Proverbs goes before destruction. Whoa, that's wrong. Proverbs is a book of the Bible. It can't bring destruction. We should move it to the side. And haughtiness before a 1618. Uh oh, 1618 doesn't seem to fit. Where should it go? That's right, the scripture reference. Let's move it over while we look at what the scripture reference currently says. Oh my, it says the verse is found in Pride Fall. I don't think either of those words fit. Let's move them over too. So what does the scripture reference need to be? Yes, Proverbs 16, 18. So what word should go at the beginning? Blank goes before destruction. Pride or fall? Yep, pride. Pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. Yes, yes, that's it. I think we have it. Let's try saying it all together on the count of three. So stand up and say it with me. One, two, three. 
Pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. Proverbs 16, 18. That's a great power verse. Let's make sure we can remember it so next time we don't get it mixed up in our brains. Stand up again and let's say it on the count of three. One, two, three. Pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. Proverbs 16, 18. Great job. Now I've got to get back to making this chili. Or was it slime? Either way, customers are waiting. Until next time, this is Teriyaki saying, sugar is sweet, just don't smell my feet. Oh. Time for call to action. Say call to action. Say it in your robot voice. Call to action. All right, I've got three key words for you to listen out to. Are you ready? King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar. When you hear that, I want you to put a crown on your head and I want you to make a silly face because his name is kind of silly, right? So King Nebuchadnezzar. All right, the second word is pride. When you hear the word pride, I want you to put up your muscles because you're so proud of yourself. You're gonna kiss your muscles because you're so bad, right? When you hear that word pride. All right, the third word is pow. When you hear the word pow, I want you to say mmm. All right, so King Nebuchadnezzar, pride and pow. Listen up for those key words in our story. Look at what I got this week. I got first place in being the best person ever. I went and bought this first place ribbon because I know I'm the best. I got good grades in school, I'm serving God, I've saved up lots of money, and I'm just an all around awesome person. I mean, look at this awesome stuff I've done. Who wouldn't wanna be my friend? In fact, everyone wants to be my friend. That's just how awesome I am. I've done all kinds of awesome things for other people and for the church, and I can guarantee God is proud of all that I've done. Okay, so obviously I was just saying all of that to prove a point. Do you remember what happened in the Bible when King Nebuchadnezzar did what I just did? He was driven away into the wild, turned crazy, and started eating grass like a cow. Can you say moo? Before that, he was a very prideful man. He was so proud of all the things he had done, things he thought he did in his own power for his glory. But are we supposed to be prideful like that? No, especially if we don't want to be crazy like a cow. However, King Nebuchadnezzar didn't have to go through everything that he did. If he would have just handled pride the right way, things would have been better. We can learn some valuable lessons about how to handle pride by looking at King Nebuchadnezzar's story. Nebuchadnezzar stood on the walls of his city and proclaimed, This is Babylon, which I have built with my hands. Do you think the king really built all of Babylon by himself? No. Not only did he have help, but who gave him the breath he was breathing in order to build Babylon? God. Who gave him the strength he was using to rule the nation of Babylon? God. He forgot that without God, he wouldn't have even been born. Remember, you can't do anything without God. God deserves the credit for everything, everything. If we allow pride to come in, we can suffer a lot of pain. One of the biggest things that can happen is exactly what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. 
not the fact that he lived with cows, but the fact that he completely lost everything that he was prideful about. Be careful, you may lose the very thing you're prideful about. Nebuchadnezzar was prideful about his kingdom, so his kingdom was taken from him. Kids, God knows the kind of damage that pride can do in our lives. He will do whatever it takes to keep us from pride. He will take away whatever it is that's causing us to be prideful. That's how much he wants to keep us from letting pride take control of our lives. Maybe you realize you've allowed pride to creep into your life. Maybe you have forgotten that you can't do anything without God. What do you need to do? You need to do exactly what King Nebuchadnezzar did. Finally. He looked up to heaven and began to praise God. He honored God for all that he had done for him. He admitted that God was the reason he had anything at all. At that moment, God restored his sanity and gave him back his life, his throne, and his kingdom. King Nebuchadnezzar continued to praise God and give him glory. He conquered pride in his life. Kids, if you want to destroy pride in your life, look to God and give him glory. Don't brag on yourself, brag on God. If you've been dealing with pride, stop talking about how great you are and start talking about how great God is. After all, He's the reason you are who you are. He created you. He deserves the credit. Wow, we learned about a crazy consequence for pride today. And I don't know if you're struggling with pride or maybe you know someone who, who does. And maybe it's just hard for you to listen to them or maybe you don't really like them too much because they're always bragging about themselves. Either way, I would love to just pray for you today. So if you could, bow your heads and close your eyes and let's pray and ask God to help us. God, we just thank you for the lesson today. God, we just ask you to forgive us for times that we've bragged about ourselves or taken credit when really all the credit goes to you because you're the one that created us. You made us and everything good that we're able to do, it's because of you. So God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And God, I just pray that you would help us to love people and have grace and mercy towards those who may brag or may have pride in their life. God, that you would help us to love them anyway and that you would use us as an example, God, to draw their hearts to you so that they could learn more about you. We just thank you for that. Thank you for forgiving us for pride. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys so much for joining us this week. I love you. I can't wait to see you again soon. Have an awesome week.